Yo, 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 this is good one. Uh, I'm on my way to Arlanda right now. I'm taking a flight over to Amsterdam, Holland. And I'm gonna be meeting up with Sean Witt from White Label Fishing. And we're gonna do some bike fishing. This is a trip which, which I usually do once or twice every year. And I'm, every time I'm so excited, you know, it's something special, bike fishing in Holland. And Jakob from Eastfield sent me some Viper 40s which I will be using this weekend. So that's pretty, pretty nice. I guess I should be focusing on driving, not filming, so see you at Orlando. Liversum, finally. Took the train from Schiphol. Schiphol. I don't know how, how you pronounce that name. So, but here we are. Just one station to go. Here we are. Hope it's home. There it is. Morning. Morning guys. So we are on the way to pick up the boat. I am in Holland right now. I arrived yesterday and uh, met up with Sean and today we are fishing. Yeah, we are going to fish. No, we are going to fish. <laughs> really? I thought we were going to do some boat. <laughs> some cricket. Some crickets. Yeah, we are going to go to... Uh, uh, well, we had a plan to go to a really big lake in the Netherlands. Been fishing there for uh, the past couple of weeks, I think, and had some mixed results. Lost maybe, a really big yeah, one. But, maybe you yeah. can tell them about that one, or maybe we can show it. Ah, uh, I was out Here. trolling and then had a good fish while casting already. Long story short, went out trolling, hooked into a big, big fish, came up, saw the head coming up, told Jesper, my buddy, where I was fishing with it. To reel everything in, or you just slowly drive the boat. But in this case, this fish was so big, like a fish you catch once in a year, maybe for some people, even once in a lifetime. I guess that's probably the biggest fish I've ever seen uh, by looking at the yeah, water wolf. Yeah, I had the water wolf camera in front of it. Yeah, and what happened is that it came up for the first time, saw its big head, knew you know it was all hands on deck, it was total mayhem, and then. Yes, but reeled in every other stuff, slowed down the boat, stopped it down. But then there was one, uh, one plane board out, one paravan was still out, and I needed to steer away, the fish away from the paravan. And by doing so, I shifted the pressure from to the left towards the right. And right in between that moment of shifting the pressure, the fish came up, jumped, and just spit out the bait that it completely inhaled. And it spit it out. We saw it jumping for you know twice before. We saw the length of the fish, and that was quite How scary. How long was it? You think? Uh, it was easily one meter twenty-five. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. Mm. So probably a bit longer. Than yeah, the, uh, probably a bit longer. If you see the head on the water wolf footage, it's thirty-seven. It's like a bucket. Yeah, it's like a bucket. It's yeah. like a thirty-seven centimeter bay. It looks like a it small. It disappears. Wolf. It disappears. Yeah. So I'm. Uh, I was quite heartbroken about it, and I was. You know, getting a bit pumped about the fact that Jakob and I would go to that lake. Get but a the wind is just shit. It's it's terrible. It's not possible to fish there today. Hopefully we can do it tomorrow, but then the weather forecast needs to change a bit. Yeah. But the direction for today is also completely off because it's blowing completely over the length of the lake. And you know, even though we got a we got a good boat, we could fish there, but it's just not effective. It's gonna be so hard. Yeah, and we just don't. It's gonna be effective. So we're gonna go to a small lake today, and then we're gonna go to Bad Luck Lake, which we call it because we know there's a lot of big fish, but somehow we never get rewarded for the effort we put in. 
So finally, we gotta put time in it. No, yeah, we're just gonna put time in. Yeah. So in the morning, a small lake here, and then in the afternoon, switch to another lake. So we're gonna fish two different spots in one day, which is good. Four. So Franz and I uh, went. Uh, I packed some stuff for the Dawson Canal expedition, and I had a big car, you know, like 24 cans of Red Bull already in the boat. Yeah. Had a. Um, Big box of candy bars and shit. Just to have some, you know, some food, some storage. In the boat overnight. In the boat already, but I, I had it in the live well because <clears> it's cool in there. Yeah. And I parked my boat at the back of the house because I had a busy guiding schedule just before we would leave. And then at one morning, I was sitting there feeling a bit groggy, you know, like I need a Red Bull, I need to drink something, so a little caffeine. So I. I asked the guy, I had a, uh, a guy from the US coming over. I asked him, you know, can you get me a can of Rebel out of the live well? Mm -hmm. He said, nah, man, there's nothing in there. It's empty. It's empty. And he was like, what? What do you mean? No, it's not empty. You're looking in the wrong compartment. Yeah, so I open it up. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? The entire can of Rebel was gone. And then it, it, it hit me. When I came to the boat in the morning, because I parked it outside, it's all out in the open. It's not something I can advise anyone to do. No, but you still you're in Dalsland. No, I was here. It was in the Oh, Netherlands. it was here. Oh, okay, but, well. Know, this is a, a good area. That yeah, yeah. Not a lot of people, you know. Nobody steals shit until now. No. But the hatches, Especially of, my, shit like the hatches that. of my boat were open. I'm like, what? Then I started to looking. And then, you know, all my fishing gear, my line for trials, he even had like a, yeah, a 6,000 euro Humminbird Solix 15 on the boat. Nothing gone. Nothing was gone. The only <laughs> thing they stole was 24 cans of Red Bull. They left the empty tray with the, the, the foil. Dudes were thirsty, man. Yeah, they didn't like, want no flat screen. They stole my candy hummingbird. bar, but they, they left all the baits and the rods and everything <laughs> in the boat. And the worst thing is, they stole my unhooking mat. The white label Why? unhooking mat. I don't oh, know. to carry the Red Bull, of course. I think so, yeah. yeah just to because carry you can, it you can actually and lie underneath a bridge and pull yeah. it over it. So, I oh. guess some homeless guy stole that shit, man. So okay, so from the bright side, you got a you got a, a, a hobo with a good uh, mood right now because of the Red Bulls, he's and he's doing uh, PR for a White exactly, Label. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get a lot of customers from the yeah. uh, hobo community. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that's not your usual theft. No, stealing no. food and drinks. It's weird. I mean, talk about priorities, man. I mean, yeah, he could have stole that hummingbird and have yeah, like of course. lived for like the entire year. He could have Red Bull for the entire year. Yeah, he's <laughs> not a smart homeless guy. Nah. Maybe that's why he's homeless. So, yeah. Oh, now I'm saying something offensive. <laughs> Bro, that was offensive. Yeah, <laughs> against all our homeless uh, yeah. followers and yeah, yeah, I'm gonna punish you. <laughs> Should focus on driving. And we start with picking up the boat, get to the lake, and we see you there. Ciao. Motherfuckers. <laughs> it's a boat ramp. I mean, why would you like. Yeah, man. You too? Yep. Since you came uh, by airplane, I hand you one of my rods. This is a uh, 240 gram Savage Gear Custom. It's 280, 258 centimeters actually, which is, I have to cheat a little, 8 foot 6 inch. Perfect. For you American guys. Can you tell me that it's centimeters? <sighs> 258. <laughs> And this is the same version, only it's a bit lighter. I like to use this one. This is 170 grams. Don't ask me about the ounces. And uh, I like it because it's stiff enough to cast big baits, but then on the same side, yeah, it has a good tipping action. Good tipping. So. Cool. So big baits, big rubber baits. Actually, uh, I'm gonna go for the Coastal um, uh, Roach. It's been really good on this lake. You can see that the rattle is coming out. That I custom most into it. Well, the cool thing about this thing, it has a horizontal... Uh, looks a bit weird. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna use and you're probably gonna use some issue stuff, I guess. Yeah. I will go with the Wingman XL, I think. Yeah? Good. Cool, I let's can tell get you that started. no pike has seen the Wingman XL before, so... 
you got the advantage today. Let's go. I'm just gonna bring the Chevelle the cook. Chevelle the cook. I'm casting the uh, the Wingman XL. It's just a shallow screw attached to it. Then I can easily work it over the wheel beds without getting stuck too much. I also used the um, the factory made stinger by Eastfield, uh, which has this uh, movable uh, pin. Which is very useful so you won't tear up the the belly of the bait so i can actually just move it so far how much steak did we get Jakob? i got one or two actually yeah, but one yeah one in the in the start but we're getting harassed by these assholes with sailing boats i mean who does that we're fishing here i mean the audacity to put sailing boats on our fishing spot, our lake. <laughs> ah well, just gotta make the best out of it, so. Should we wrap it up? <clears throat> Next lake? I think we should wrap it up. Zero activity. Well, we had a few takes. You had one on the women I tell? Yeah, I did. I had one on a, or two actually on a roach. Had a lot of small perch following, but that's not what it should be, so uh, just. Soft. Gonna go to plan B and uh, see if we can find some active fish. Can't get any worse, so uh, off to Bad Luck Lake. <laughs> Time to change the name. So uh, let's go. That's the one. Are you gonna be using uh, the 40 centimeters? Or yeah, gonna 40 centimeter. The difference with most setups is they use a free treble setup. Instead of two big trebles, I kind of like to use these. Uh, this is a 4-0, this is a 4-0, this is a 3-0. Instead of having two big 7-0s, which are really, I don't like it. They just, especially the original ones, to me they do too much damage. I know it's still fishing, but if we can minimize the damage, that's good. Do you also feel that you have a better hookup ratio yeah. with three hooks? Yeah, these are sharper, they penetrate more easily. And with the big ones, you have a lot of open space where they can just get a free pass. This seems to work better. Clarity is perfect. I'm happy with that. The Aesox Inc. from a buddy of mine from Belgium. 37 centimeter bait. I can fish it close to five meters deep. Nice. So we are on day two. We're gonna do some trolling and uh, maybe also some casting today. Uh, we had a really hard day yesterday. We couldn't really execute plan A because of really hard winds so we had to seek shelter in smaller waters but uh, it looks a bit more promising today a little less wind and uh, yeah we're gonna start off with some trolling and maybe later today some casting this is what I will be using today this is the Eastfield Wiper 40 centimeter it's about 500 grams really big soft bait with the built-in built-in system even though I, I use a gonna hook myself first. <laughs> <laughs> I use a, uh, a special made stinger rig for this one uh, with a treble system with three hooks that will release like this. Much better hookup ratio and uh, you, you do want that extra treble on the back because it's such a big bait you know. And, and it was slow yesterday Jakob was through about that so we're just gonna do some trolling on a uh, smaller water system like you said, it's not plan A, no. but uh, plan oh. B should be 
viable as well. Yeah. So big baits, Jakob is fishing with the big vipers. Uh, I'm going all in on the 40 centimeter baits as well, so 40 centimeter trouts, uh, the 37 centimeter ESOX Maximus, something I'm looking forward to, to use today as well. And some smaller stuff, I got a new prototype from Savage Gear that was really successful in the spring. I haven't really used it during the summer, but now that autumn has finally kicked in, especially with the wind like this. Um, that bait looks promising as well. That's the fun thing about trolling. You cannot use one, you can use two, but you can also use three baits. Yeah. That's what we're gonna do today, so. Cool. Let's go, man. Let's get it. One of the benefits of having a screen like this, not a big screen like this, but a hummingbird with high frequency side imaging like this it runs about 1.2 megahertz and what it does it sends a signal to the to the left and to the right in this case to 30 meters to the left and 30 meters to the right and i can adjust that if i want to it helps me especially now on a small water system like this it helps me see the banks on the left side i can see the weed line over here and i can also scroll back and i can see a school of bait fish standing just against the weed line over here and in some cases, and I can also spot the pike or other fish, schools of brim, or I can see small pockets in that weed line. And that helps me for casting. I can mark them and start casting because those are interesting spots for pike or any other predator fish to stand in. So having a high frequency side imaging like this really helps out in locating the fish and eventually you will catch more fish. So we just switched to another spot and uh, I was putting out my 25 centimeter roach. And then I was slowly giving it line and then a the pike just snatched it while the spool was open. So I was yelling uh, some words that I won't repeat on camera now. But we missed the first one of the day. Yo, 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 this is good one. <laughs> Big hat, bro. Dude, this is the biggest hat ever. This is a 40 centimeter bait. Watch out. Watch out, yeah. Look at this. 40 centimeter. Gone. That just happened. 1 meter 26 on the Viper 40. And actually it's my first my first fish in five days of fishing in the Netherlands. So yeah, I really struggled for this fish. But finally she bites. Uh, we're fishing in a pretty shallow lake, probably around two, two, three meters, and just I had this lure on short line just behind the boat. I was talking to Sean and then I was just seeing something in the uh, on the side and the rod was completely bent down and started smashing so yeah and she took line and just went away all the way so I felt it was a good fish from the beginning but uh, I mean this is 40 centimeter lure and it, it was completely gone in her mouth I had to use the power power colors to uh, to keep the hook and small operation and then uh, she was free but so usually when we use big baits like this we, we won't get many bites during the day but I mean we're after the really big fish and uh, you just gotta put it, put your time into it, and uh, keep on grinding because you won't get that many bait, uh, bites on baits like this. But when they bite, it's probably gonna be a better fish. So, yeah, just keep on grinding, put the hard work in. <laughs> Shit, man! <laughs> Look at me. Behind the scenes. Fucking wind! It's. The wind is killing us, like actually killing us. Yeah. You know, we can't fish the spots where we want to fish. We can't fish on the lakes where we want to fish. The wind is pushing us off. It's like Jakob was saying, you know, it's like, I don't know, his first fish in five days of fishing here. But that's just because we're after the big fish, but also because we had such shitty weather. We either had snow or we had like 
35 degrees with no wind at all and now we have massive winds dropping temperatures and but we got a big reward cool ah. <laughs> so what's next just get the baits out and keep on fishing it's on back in business let's go Hey Jakob, I got a present for you. Here. Thanks bro. For your big fish. <laughs> you need some vitamins, some energy. Perfect. Oh, is this a banana? Yeah, it is. Nice. Mm. I feel that Shit. big fish vibe. Mm. Yeah, it smells like big fish. <laughs> checking if there was some grass on and which was correct and then I uh, you know let the paraffin slide down a bit slow down the bait and just made a stop like this you know and then a big meter blast pike just swooped up grabbed it but there was no tension on the line because it was opening my spool so uh, bad luck bad luck live in the moment till I die Fish. <laughs> no, I'm not on drugs. <laughs> What's going on? He was jumping out of the water, giving me the fingers, and he was jumping down, diving down. Jacob, what do you do, man? Well, I was away for like five minutes, and then you. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> you did you get some napkins? <laughs> you, look, you look really happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Typical Dutch weather, man. Let's get her back and put yeah. the camera away. Let's get her back. Let's go. Get the camera. 